Okay guys, time for another game. One more time it's gonna be a Russian visual novel. It's called Tiny Bunny. It's supposed to be a horror themed visual novel. So let's see how it goes. Okay. I think that's wind, right? Sounds like wind. Okay, that, that is typical winter related, I think. The wind clawed at my window all night long. It wandered the fields and howled like a hungry beast. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices, shrill, gentle, sneery, twined in the air. They were shouting and laughing and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own. The creaky old mind of a building that had seen a lot in its days and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest and the dark green ticket gazed back with its hollow eyes, rustling, whistling, swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves there was nobody behind the crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. It's just a play of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was just my imagination. I was already 12 after all. Still. Okay, that looks like... I'm not sure if it looks like a... I think it's more like a fox, right? Hey, put away your book! How many times have I told you not to read at the table? It's bad for your health. Look at how slouched you are. Right. I didn't protest and put the book about Conan the Barbarian aside. I was stuck on a line I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. Ola had already finished her breakfast and was uh, munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic she almost looked like your typical girl from commercials. You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes, as if it would make the porridge disappear. Hazy anxiousness welled up inside all because of the previous sleepless night, the black forest around our house and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. It looked like a jellyfish from... For real, what is going on? I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is. Or how cold the black forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with a cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I'll get it. I had 10 seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for the spoon. What is this carved on the other side of the table? Karina! Ha! That's my mom's name. I guess she carved it out with something pointy when she was little. She sure was a rascal, damaging the furniture like that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar though. Should I remind her about it? No, she's been in a bit of bad mood lately. I imagined her being my age, sitting under this table. I wonder, was mom afraid of the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Or the thick forest? I imagine my grandma coming into my little mom's room, sitting at the edge of her bed, where Olya sleeps nowadays and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. Taiga is a special place, little girl. It's watching you closely, sniffing you out, trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you are a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, it will grab you by the side and drag you under the ground. And that would be it. Grandma was caring. She never fought with anybody, never yelled, never swore. Those were the times without the maddening screams until late at night, without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. 
Okay, I think he talks about his parents. Our parents used to love each other back then. Mm-hmm. I remember listening in one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about grandma getting prepared for her funeral. She had already bought a casket and she called it her cute funeral box. It waited for its time in the closet patiently. It was black, upholstered with meat-colored material on the inside. I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. Okay, that is sad. So, grandma passed away. His parents probably divorced. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all of the photos were gone. Glass-covered pictures with gray faces of my ancestors. They all had a dead but watchful look in their eyes. I crawled out from under the table. Olive was done with her cookies and was looking at my share like a sly woodland critter. I turned my gaze toward the frosted window. There were a lot of dark pines outside, but they didn't grab my attention. The pattern of frost formed a picture on the glass. Olya, look, it's a fox! Okay, yeah, I, I was right, it actually looks like a fox. Like, I wasn't sure if it's more like a fox or wolf, but yeah, it's definitely a fox. For a second I thought it was a wolf, but nah, 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 it's a fox, definitely. Where? It looked almost like those optical illusion things they put on the back of student notebooks. A mixture of lines at first glance, but if you blur your vision a little bit and look under a certain angle... Not outside, on the window! Look, here's the nose, and here's... Hey, eat up! Yes, yes, just a moment. I don't see anything. Hurry up! There's not much left. Oh, there it is. But it still doesn't look like one. And I'm telling you, it does. Wait, I, I think I did it more in a Olya voice. And I'm telling you, it does. No, uh. It does. Stop it. These kids, I swear. Now I couldn't see the fox either. It disappeared. Went away. Only the frosty patterns, similar to stretched out nettle leaves, kept creeping up the glass. My dad entered the kitchen with long, measured steps. Okay, they're not divorced. Okay, guess they're just fighting. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. Mom would always ask jokingly. Come on, shave it off, it stinks. This was so long ago. Nowadays, rumbling doors and witty comebacks were an everyday occurrence. Ola always covers her ears whenever she hears something like What's the point of all this through the wall? It's all for your sake, Dad would reply. For the sake of our family. I always caught every sound and fear of hearing the most dreaded, the deadliest word that started with a D. Divorce. Mm -hmm. D-I-V-O. I don't even want to finish it. It was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken into two different families. Anyway, your fox is nothing. I have an owl on my window. You and your owl talk again. You said you believed me just yesterday. Has anybody seen my car keys? I remember leaving them on the windowsill. Right? Maybe you did and maybe not. You're a grown man. A father of two and still... Karina, please stop. Just let me get ready in peace. Your keys are in the basket near the phone. Well, thank you very much. Anton, stop making a martyr out of yourself and finish eating already. And the owl? There was no owl. But there was one. It had giant glowing eyes. Olya sprang up from the chair and placed her hands on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers, the size of an apple each. 
Last year you had Baba in your closet, and now this all? Well, Baba is like boogeyman, sorta. Like, uh, yeah, in Russia, parents usually tell stories about Baba to the to the children <laughs> for different reasons. But I saw it. Ola shifted her gaze back and forth from dad to mom to me, but couldn't find any support. Have you thought about befriending it? You know, like uh, feeding it with imaginary mice? Don't bully our girl! She's just afraid to sleep alone because she's still little. Yeah, I don't like how father talks like dude. Rude. Ola parted her lips in rebellion and rushed into the hallway. The staircase that led to the second floor creaked. Mom gave Dad a strict look. <laughs> I agree with her. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable to be pinned under it. Dad just snorted in reply and left, ringing with the keys he just found. A minute had passed and the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. It was stored on incredibly worn out cassette tape, which Dad already had to glue together once. It's so easy to fix objects by gluing them back together, for example. But how do you fix a relationship? Oh yeah, that's a hard question, kid. That's a hard question. Mom moved to the living room and I was left alone. Anxiously, stealing glances at the window. Ola had trouble sleeping ever since we moved to this house. She would toss and turn or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump up in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped to take uh, her mind off all the troubles we had with the move and our parents. Okay, and then Ola said she saw the giant flying monster outside her window. Okay, that looks creepy as hell. Poor child. She became obsessed with it. Our parents did everything in their power. They tried every little trick to get rid of those ridiculous fears. Ola refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares. After tonight, I was unsure what to make of my sister's words. What to think of it myself? Can nightmares be infectious? Just last night I couldn't get a wink of sleep and ended up thinking of what to expect in my new school. There were a couple of days left before the beginning of a new term. My imagination drew long twisting hallways that led to a classroom full of kids. But all the students behind their desks were simply dark figures. Cut out using a template. Circular holes gaped in the middle of their faces and pairs of eyes blinked inside those holes. It was as if some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind the flat black silhouettes. Their cruel glares filled with icy sneers made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Won't they gang up on me and beat me down? Stomp on me with their bloody shoes? The damn school can burn for all I care. I just wished for anything to happen to it. Doesn't really matter what, I didn't want to go there that badly. I didn't want to see people who are just uh, itching to smack me on the head, trip me up, think of a new offensive name for me, worse than the previous one. I felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider or some sort of a monster. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the walls. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Ola begged me to hand hang them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. The small circle of friends I had also enjoyed my paintings, and they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagine mom picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, You've got the wrong number! 
Or, Anton is not around. Anton is not around. I imagine my future classmates lying in the bed just like me, listening to the howls of invisible werewolves outside their windows. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all. But who would ever like a boy with thick glasses? I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little, and now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet, my mom. The house creaked, pressed by the wind. The condo we used to live in, a nine-floor concrete building, buzzed with a neighbor's drill, mumbled with a TV set from behind the wall, cried like a baby from the big family next door. Our current house, though I can't really call it new, was completely different. It was silent and easygoing during the day. Its shadows lay dormant in the corners, on the closet, cobwebs, and under the stairs. But they all woke up during the night. Something was watching me from every corner, almost as if they all thought us of my diseased family, with their ashen eyes were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. The floor was creaking, rusty drains were moaning, the attic was occupied by no sea drafts. One could think the house was performing some sort of demonic melody. And then I realized I was in fact hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. Somewhere at the edge of my perception, I could hear a flute. It was mixed in with the sound of the wind, of the creaking old house and my thoughts too. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a product of my imagination. It's not like someone is playing it there amidst the cold snowy night, right? Okay, what are we gonna see here? Oh, uh, look at this, this is so freaking cool. Someone was dancing in the field. Black silhouettes I could barely make out with the dark forest as the backdrop. They jumped around, basked in moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. Okay, I think there's bear, wolf, probably fox and some kind of a bird. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but those were clearly not wolves. They stood, uh, they stood upright at times, circled around, holding hands and whipping up snow disappearing into the shadows for a brief moment and then coming back. Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, making me anxious at the same time. Suddenly the music had stopped. The dancing shadows froze in place and I could swear pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow carnival and sprinted across the field with giant leaps. Wow, I think it's gonna be a jump scare now. It glided on squeaky snow without leaving any prints until it was devoured by the pitch black shadow of my house, which became even darker and thicker. My heart was jumping around like the bird inside a cage. I shut the curtains with a swift motion and stepped back toward the bed. They saw me! A freezing torrent of my fear washed, washed over me. I stood in the middle of a perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guests move and scrape around looking for an entrance. The sound moved to the right, then circled around the house. Now my guest should be at the front door. I jumped into the bed and covered myself with the blanket as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. I remember the funeral, my grandma lying there, hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a tin doll. Ants running up and down the legs of chairs that held my grandma's casket. I imagined those little creatures climbing up her head 
and pulling up her eyelids with their tiny legs. Uh, yikes. Then her wrinkly eyeballs would once again move inside their sockets and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. I was chanting the spell she taught me throughout the whole procedure. And now, lying under the blanket and listening to squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the island of Buyan, underneath the blemish, blemished sun, in the sea of color blue, stands a cabin made of wood. I wonder how it sounds in Russian. Derly lard and ancient hair for the spawn from devil's lair to feast and always live alone God's faithful servant named Anton Evil leave this house must ashes to ashes, dust to dust Bizarre sounds had disappeared I cautiously peeked out from under the blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hangman and then the night dosed me with a new portion of boiling terror. The sound scratched at my eardrums. In reality, something or someone was scratching at the front door, horribly clawing at wood, demanding to be let in. The door was shut. Dad had become very cautious recently, so he installed a sturdy lock. I remember him staring at the forest intently as if he was looking for someone. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I hugged my knees, placing my chin between them and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy and weak before the might of darkness. And then the doorknob twitched slightly. Then it turned halfway, once, twice, as if the person who tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more and then started clicking violently. My jaw cramped from fear. My wet fingers clutched the blanket. The door creaked and opened. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the thin drains. Now... You'll see, now you'll see. The door was wide open. The darkness wreathed inside the carnivorous mouth of a doorway. Tuni. What the hell is Tuni? Tuni. It was as if the night itself was calling out to me. Flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling and snared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my room, waiting for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. Tuni. Tuni. My abdomen tightened and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkness asked me, Tony, you asleep? My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. I almost screamed from relief. Oh, Ola, I, I'm not sleeping. Did something happen? Ola frowned and stuck out her lower lip. A clear sign that she was about to cry. It's there again, staring at me. Shoo her away, Tony, please! I wonder why she call him, calls him Tony. I'm so scared! I mean, like, Anton, right, but like... Russians never call someone Anton, Tony. Like, they will call him like I don't know Antosha or something like that I'm so scared the fear that was uh, tormenting me just a minute ago crawled away and hit somewhere in my stomach I needed to calm Ola down it was just a dream silly don't be scared dreams don't bite no one's going to harm you Ola sobbed 
She was trying her best to believe me. But was I sure myself? I have an idea. Let's go to your room and watch the, vid the video. Sleeping Beauty, for example. You like that cartoon, don't you? Why does the Sleeping Beauty have a prince and I have the scary bird? That question took me by surprise. Alright, let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled. Fuzzy. What was that? What studied me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? The darkness was clinging to the window and it couldn't be fooled by grandma's old chance. It couldn't be satisfied with a feast of lard and long ashen hair. Tony, you coming? Yes, yes. Just a moment. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, did it happen like that or I accidentally... Yeah, I think I accidentally pressed the wrong button. What the hell was that? That was a wolf. Okay, that was a freaking nightmare. That's why I didn't want to laugh at Olya and her all in the morning. Who could be visiting us here in the middle of nowhere? We don't know anyone around here. So persistent. I felt extremely unsettled just from a silly thought that our morning guest could have come from the woods. I could barely hear voices coming from the front door. My mind was urging me to hide in the closet, under the table, behind the curtains where Ola always hides. Tony, come here! I felt like kettlebells were tied to my feet, but still dragged them toward the hallway. A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. They smelled like frost and worry. My mom always uh, winced and grumbled the moment she saw patrol cars, worse than bandits. At the moment, though, she looked somewhat confused. Hello? The senior officer, who wore a grim expression, nodded. A boy had gone missing yesterday. His name's Vova. Look at this, please. Have you seen him? The policeman held out a photograph to me. There was a ginger boy around the age of elementary school, pictured with a wall carpet as the backdrop. He had a stripped cat in his hands and wore a white smile. No, I haven't. Are you sure? Look closely. Where would I see him? I don't know anyone around here, I barely leave the house. Well, maybe you've seen him from the window? That's right. Your windows? Look straight at the forest, don't they? The window... No, I haven't seen anything. I see. He sounded tired, but his eyes... His stare, long and heavy, was full of suspicion. I squirmed unwittingly under the weight of guilt, which his giant shadow cast over me. The policeman finally tore his eyes from me and glanced over the hallway, the stairway and the cracks in the ceiling, which I haven't noticed before for some reason. How do you like your new place, by the way? Getting used to it? Bit by bit. It's just our little daughter misses the city a lot. Misses the city, huh? Have the locals been treating you well? Yes, everything is alright, thank you. The policeman pierced through me, one more time, with his grey eyes. My head started spinning. Uh, can I help you somehow? I asked that in a shaky voice, to look like a polite boy, and to end this unpleasant conversation sooner. Now that I think about it, you look just like one of my nephews, little fella. He's a witty boy around your age, wears the same type of goggles. Haha, <laughs> always engrossed in reading those mystery novels. Told me he wants to enroll in police school when his family visited this summer. Wanted to help other people just like me. See? I felt uncomfortable, as if a distant relative 
and not a police officer stood before me. You know what? Little boys like you should stay at home, steer away from trouble. The times have changed so much. Mom interjected in a cold voice. You don't say. Oh, well then. What grade are you in? Tony boy? Sixth. Have you made any friends here so far? Not yet. I'll be going to school for the first time after the break. Uh, then I'll leave you my number just in case. Call me if you have any new info. The policemen were gone along with their shadows. The smell of cheap cologne and the, fo and the photo of a smiling boy.